Dear listeners, tonight I will take you on a journey through dark, winding corridors where an ancient and terrifying legend comes to life, the fabled labyrinth of Minos. Settle in comfortably. Close your eyes and let yourselves be enveloped by this tale of heroism, love and relentless determination. Join us as we follow the courageous Theseus, guided by the light of hope and the unwavering support of the brilliant Ariadne, as he ventures into the heart of the labyrinth to confront the fearsome Minotaur. The Labyrinth of Minos Face the Minotaur's Wrath In the heart of ancient Crete, on a dark and mysterious night, stood a labyrinth so terrifying that even the bravest heroes trembled at its gates. The labyrinth was a masterpiece of architectural genius and malevolent intent, designed by the cunning craftsman Daedalus. Legends whispered of a fearsome beast dwelling within, born of ancient sins and dreaded by all. This beast, the Minotaur, was a creature of horror, half man, half bull, with insatiable hunger and primal rage. It was the offspring of Queen Pasiphae and a majestic bull, a result of divine punishment and human folly. The Minotaur devoured numerous innocent youths sent as tribute from Athens, a grim reminder of the pact between King Minos of Crete and the defeated Athenians. Here was where the brave hero Theseus, who had the heart of a lion, went on an adventure that would try his strength, mind, and soul. Theseus, the son of Aegeus, the Athens king, was resolved to bring his people's agony to an end and put an end to the hideous dread. He had one clear objective in mind, to kill the Minotaur and free Athens from its sinister duty. Despite his legendary bravery and heroism, Theseus had never encountered a challenge quite like the one presented by the labyrinth. The labyrinth was intended to confuse and disorient everyone who entered, serving as more than simply a physical maze, but also a psychological battlefield. As the night of his entry into the labyrinth approached, Theseus felt a mix of anticipation and apprehension. The weight of his mission bore heavily upon him, but his resolve was unshakable. In the days leading up to his venture, he met Princess Ariadne, daughter of King Minos. Ariadne was a woman of rare intelligence and breathtaking beauty, her presence like a beacon of light in the oppressive darkness of Crete. Her long, flowing hair and eyes that sparkled with a mix of wisdom and melancholy captivated Theseus. She was a figure of strength and grace, possessing a keen mind and a compassionate heart. Ariadne walked forward in the palace garden under the soft glow of the moon, her heart thumping with dread and emotion. Observing Theseus from a distance, she was struck by his courage and tenacity. Ariadne felt she had to assist him as he got ready for his treacherous expedition. A haven of peace and beauty, the garden stood in stark contrast to the horrors that the labyrinth held, bathed in the silvery glory of the moon. The air was filled with the aroma of blossoming flowers, and the soft rustle of leaves produced a calming symphony. Their conversation felt much more serious in this calm environment. With a calm but firm voice, Ariadne handed Theseus a ball of thread, a seemingly simple yet vital gift for his survival. 
Tie the end of the thread at the entrance and unravel it as you go deeper into the labyrinth. This way, you will find your way back, she instructed, her eyes shining with hope. Theseus looked deeply into her eyes, thanking her for her courage and trust. He saw in her a kindred spirit, someone who understood the stakes and the sacrifices required. Ariadne's gesture was not just an act of assistance. It was an act of defiance against the tyranny of her father and the cruelty of the labyrinth. Her bravery in aiding Theseus was a testament to her character, and her intelligence was evident in the simplicity and effectiveness of her solution. In that moment, a bond was forged between them, a bond of mutual respect and shared purpose. Theseus knew that without her help, his chances of emerging alive from the labyrinth would be slim. The labyrinth was a place of nightmares, where many had entered but none had returned. It was a twisting, turning maze of stone, with walls that seemed to close in and passages that led to dead ends. The darkness within was palpable a living entity that seemed to breathe and whisper secrets of despair. With the ball of thread tightly in hand, he turned his gaze towards the dark entrance of the labyrinth. The entrance loomed before him, a gaping maw that seemed to swallow all light and hope. Theseus took a deep breath, steeling himself for the ordeal ahead. He tied the end of the thread securely at the entrance, feeling the weight of Ariadne's hopes and his own determination. As he stepped into the labyrinth, the light from the entrance quickly faded, and he was enveloped in a darkness so complete it was almost suffocating. The air was thick with the scent of damp stone and decay, and the silence was occasionally broken by distant, eerie echoes. Theseus moved cautiously, each step deliberate and measured, unraveling the thread behind him as he ventured deeper into the maze. Every corner he turned, every shadow he faced, was a testament to the labyrinth's cunning design. But Theseus held on to the thread, both physically and mentally, as a symbol of his connection to Ariadne and his path to salvation. The labyrinth tested his resolve, his courage, and his ingenuity, but Theseus remained steadfast, driven by his mission and the knowledge that Ariadne awaited his return. Thus began Theseus's journey into the heart of darkness, armed with nothing but his strength, his sword, and the slender thread that linked him to the outside world. With the ball of thread firmly in his grasp, Theseus stepped into the overwhelming darkness of the labyrinth. The entrance now behind him seemed to vanish, swallowed by the encroaching shadows. Every step he took echoed through the winding corridors, the sound reverberating off the cold, damp walls. Each whisper of the wind felt like a warning sigh, a subtle reminder of the dangers that lay ahead. The labyrinth was a living entity, breathing through its ancient stone structure, a maze designed to confuse and disorient all who dared to enter. As Theseus advanced, he faced unimaginable challenges. The labyrinth's architecture was a masterpiece of deception and peril, with corridors that twisted and turned, leading to dead ends and sudden drops. Hidden traps were scattered throughout, a testament to the cruel ingenuity of its creator, Daedalus. Shadows moved at the edge of his vision, 
giving the illusion of being watched, and the faint echoes of forgotten screams added to the haunting atmosphere. The walls seemed to shift and change, transforming the labyrinth into an endless maze of illusions. The first trap he encountered was a complex system of hidden arrows. As he cautiously moved forward, Theseus felt a subtle shift in the air, a slight disturbance that set his instincts on edge. With a quick reflex, he dove to the ground just as a wave of arrows flew overhead, embedding themselves into the stone walls with a menacing thud. The narrow escape left him breathless, but also more determined. Carefully rising, he continued, more vigilant than ever to every sound and movement. His senses were heightened, attuned to the labyrinth's sinister tricks. Navigating the labyrinth required more than physical strength. It demanded acute awareness and quick thinking. In another part of the labyrinth, Theseus encountered a vast hall filled with eerie statues. At first they appeared to be simple stone representations, silent guardians of the maze. But as he stepped closer, the eyes of the statues lit up with a red glow and they began to move. Each statue seemed alive, animated by some dark magic ready to attack intruders. Theseus's heart pounded as he realized the danger he was in. The statues, with their cold, lifeless eyes now glowing menacingly, lunged at him with mechanical precision. Using his agility and combat skills, Theseus dodged their blows, moving with a grace honed by years of training. Each statue was a formidable opponent, and their coordinated attacks tested his limits. Despite the overwhelming odds, Theseus managed to evade them, his movements fluid and calculated. In the midst of the chaos, he noticed a small inconspicuous lever behind one of the statues. Seizing an opportunity, he maneuvered through the attacking statues and pulled the lever, revealing a secret passage hidden behind the stone wall. The passage led him deeper into the labyrinth, where the challenges grew more treacherous. As he ventured further, Theseus reached a dark room where the sound of flowing water filled the air. The room was a stark contrast to the dry, oppressive corridors he had traversed so far. The floor was slippery and covered with moss, making each step a risk. The moisture in the air was thick, and the faint light barely penetrated the gloom. Carefully Theseus advanced, his every movement deliberate to avoid slipping. At one point he slipped on the moss-covered floor and nearly fell into an underground river that ran through the room. The water was dark and swift, a hidden danger waiting to claim the unwary. Grasping a small protrusion on the edge, Theseus managed to save himself at the last moment, his heart racing from the close call. His breath was heavy, each exhale a reminder of the life and death stakes of his journey. Despite the physical and mental exhaustion, his determination to continue remained unwavering. The labyrinth seemed to sense his resolve, responding with ever more insidious challenges. The walls closed in, narrowing the passages to barely navigable spaces. The air grew stale and oppressive, the weight of the underground pressing down on him. Yet Theseus pressed on, guided by the thread that linked him to the entrance and the promise of escape. Each turn, each step was a victory against the malevolent design of the labyrinth. As Theseus navigated the labyrinth, 
he understood that this journey was not just a physical battle, but a trial of his very essence. The challenges he faced were manifestations of the fears and doubts that every hero must conquer. Each trap he evaded, each shadow he confronted, brought him closer to the heart of the labyrinth and the ultimate test that awaited him there. Then from the shadows the Minotaur emerged. It was a creature of nightmares, standing tall and imposing, with the body of a man and the head of a bull. Its red eyes gleamed with ancient fury, and its nostrils flared with each exhale, expelling clouds of hot, angry breath. The Minotaur's roars reverberated through the labyrinth, shaking the very walls and filling the air with a sense of dread. This was the beast Theseus had come to defeat, the monstrous guardian of the labyrinth, born of ancient sins and nourished by the fears and sacrifices of countless youths. Theseus gritted his teeth, feeling the weight of his sword in his hand and raised it, prepared for a fight to the death. He knew that this battle would be unlike any he had ever fought. The Minotaur, with its massive and powerful body, lunged at him with unparalleled force. Each blow it delivered was not just intended to wound, but to utterly destroy. The force behind its attacks was overwhelming, and Theseus had to summon every ounce of his strength and skill to evade and counter. The battle was epic, a clash of titans in the heart of the labyrinth. Every strike, every parry seemed to determine the fate of the world. Theseus moved with the agility of a dancer and the precision of a seasoned warrior. He used every trick and technique he had learned over years of training, his mind and body working in perfect harmony. The clang of metal against bone and the beast's roars of fury echoed through the maze, creating a cacophony of chaos and violence. At one point, the Minotaur managed to corner Theseus, trapping him in a snare of claws and fangs. The beast's strength was immense, and it seemed as though Theseus might be overwhelmed. He struggled against the creature's vice-like grip, feeling the sharp claws digging into his flesh and the hot breath of the Minotaur against his skin. The pain was intense, but Theseus refused to give in. With supreme effort, drawing upon his reserves of strength and willpower, he managed to free himself, breaking the hold of the Minotaur and rolling away to safety. The battle raged on, with neither combatant willing to yield. Theseus's movements became more strategic, his attacks more calculated. He studied the Minotaur's patterns, looking for any weakness, any opening he could exploit. The beast in its blind fury was powerful but predictable. Theseus's mind raced, formulating a plan even as he dodged and struck. He aimed for the creature's vital points, seeking to bring it down with precision rather than brute force. Finally, Theseus saw his opportunity. The Minotaur, in a moment of overconfidence, left itself exposed. With a swift and decisive move, Theseus struck. His sword sliced through the air, finding its mark with lethal precision. The blade cut deep into the Minotaur's flesh, eliciting a roar of pain and helplessness. The beast staggered, its massive body trembling as it struggled to stay upright. Theseus pressed his advantage, delivering a series of quick, decisive blows. The final blow was swift and decisive, 
a strike that pierced the heart of the Minotaur. The beast let out one last deafening roar before collapsing to the ground. The sound of its fall echoed through the labyrinth, a testament to the end of an era of terror. The Minotaur lay motionless, its red eyes dimming as the life drained from its body. Thasia stood over the fallen creature, his breath coming in ragged gasps, his body bruised and battered but victorious. The battle had been a true test of his heroism, pushing him to the limits of his endurance and beyond. Theseus knew that this victory was not just a personal triumph, but a liberation for all those who had been held in fear by the Minotaur's reign. He looked down at the fallen beast, a mixture of relief and sorrow washing over him. The Minotaur, once a symbol of terror and destruction, was now just another victim of the labyrinth's cruel legacy. Theseus took a moment to gather his thoughts, his sword still in hand, his body aching from the exertion. The labyrinth, which had seemed so alive and menacing, now felt eerily silent. The echoes of battle faded, replaced by the quiet hum of the maze's stillness. Theseus knew he had to leave this place, to return to the light and to those who awaited his return. With his sword in hand and the memory of the battle etched in his mind, Theseus began his journey back, guided by the thread that had led him into the heart of the labyrinth and would now lead him out to the light. With laboured breaths and a body covered in wounds, Theseus followed the thread, guided by the light of hope and love. The aftermath of his epic battle with the Minotaur left him physically drained, yet mentally sharp and determined. Each step he took was heavy, the weight of his ordeal evident in his slow, deliberate movements. The thread, his lifeline in the dark maze, glowed faintly, a beacon that pulled him towards safety and freedom. As he advanced through the labyrinth, Theseus encountered other challenges. These new obstacles, though daunting, seemed minor compared to the harrowing fight with the Minotaur. His recent victory had emboldened him, giving him the confidence to face whatever the labyrinth could throw his way. Each new trial was a reminder of the labyrinth's treacherous design, but Theseus was no longer the same man who had entered it. He was now a seasoned warrior, tempered by battle and driven by purpose. He passed through a section of the labyrinth where the walls seemed to close in around him. The passage grew increasingly narrow, and the air harder to breathe. The suffocating darkness pressed in from all sides, and the labyrinth's sinister intent seemed palpable. Theseus felt the walls constricting, as if the labyrinth itself was alive, trying to trap him in its bowels forever. Panic threatened to rise, but he quelled it, focusing on the thread in his hand. Using Ariadne's thread, Theseus found a small opening and managed to escape the trap. The thread was his guide, his constant companion in the labyrinth's twisting corridors. Each twist and turn was navigated with the assurance that the thread would lead him back to the entrance, to freedom. The narrow escape from the closing walls was a testament to his quick thinking and unwavering trust in Ariadne's gift. Her foresight and his resolve combined to see him through the most challenging parts of the maze. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, Theseus emerged from the labyrinth. 
The transition from the oppressive darkness of the maze to the open air was sudden and overwhelming. He squinted against the brightness, his eyes adjusting to the light after so long in the gloom. The sight that greeted him filled his heart with warmth and relief. Harry Hadney stood there waiting for him, her eyes shining with joy and relief. She had been his silent strength throughout his ordeal, her hope and love guiding him through the darkness. Without hesitation, Ariadne embraced him with all her strength, tears streaming down her cheeks. They were tears of joy, relief, and pride. Theseus, her hero, had returned victorious. The emotional reunion was a culmination of all their shared fears and hopes. Ariadne's faith in Theseus had not been misplaced. He had triumphed against unimaginable odds and emerged not just alive but victorious. Her embrace was tight, conveying all the unspoken emotions of the harrowing night. The connection between them was profound, forged through shared struggle and triumph. Theseus felt a profound sense of gratitude and love for Ariadne. Her intelligence and courage had been crucial to his success. The simple ball of thread she had given him had been his lifeline, a symbol of hope and perseverance. He held her close, feeling the warmth of her embrace and the reality of his triumph sinking in. The victory was not just his alone. It was a shared achievement, a testament to their combined strength and resilience. As they stood there, united in their joy, the reality of their victory began to settle in. Theseus's body bore the marks of his battle, bruises, cuts, and the exhaustion of his ordeal. Yet standing there with Ariadne, he felt a renewed strength, a sense of accomplishment that overshadowed the pain. The labyrinth's horrors were now behind him, and ahead lay the promise of a new beginning. The story of Theseus and the labyrinth of Minos remains a legend of supreme courage, unconditional love and intelligence triumphing over darkness. It is a tale that transcends time, a beacon of hope for all who face their own labyrinths in life. Every night, when shadows begin to dance and the wind whispers, remember this tale and find the strength to face your own challenges. In Theseus's memory, let us never forget that with courage and intelligence, even the darkest paths can be illuminated. Theseus's journey through the labyrinth and his triumphant return are a testament to the human spirit's indomitable will. His bravery, coupled with Ariadne's ingenuity, created a legacy that would inspire generations. Their story is a reminder that no matter how daunting the journey or how fierce the adversary, hope and determination can guide us through the darkest times. And that, my dear listeners, was the labyrinth of Minos. Theseus, with his unwavering bravery and the clever guidance of Princess Ariadne, managed to conquer the fearsome Minotaur and escape the treacherous labyrinth of Minos. Their courage and intelligence shone as a beacon of light in the darkest of nights. So remember that behind every challenge may lie a hero, and within every labyrinth a story waiting to be discovered. If you enjoyed tonight's tale from the heart of ancient Crete, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to never miss a mystical story. What would you have done in Theseus's place? Would you have ventured into the labyrinth or sought another way? 
Let us know in the comments below. Until next time, sleep well and stay curious.